Hey guys, welcome to another Once Upon a Sin tutorial video. In this video, we've got a uh, Eurorack module again. This time we have the 4MS STS or Stereo Triggered Sampler. As the name suggests, it's a stereo sampler, so you can play back left and right channels independently or together mixed in stereo. You can also record in stereo directly on the module or load your sounds directly on the micro SD card, which comes included. You can load up to 600 different sounds, that's 60 banks of 10 samples each. And you have CV control over all the knobs and buttons that you see on top here. In this video, I'm going to focus mainly on playback and give you an overview of what the module can do. In a future video, we're going to focus more on sampling, recording, and manipulating sounds. So with that said, let's get started. So if we go from the top here, you have your standard pitch knob. Then you have your sample and bank selection, so you can pick which sample you want to trigger. You have your play button for manually triggering the sound. And then you have your standard sampling uh, manipulation, so you can change the start position and the length. And then finally here you have a reverse button, so you push it in and the sample reverses. So you have effectively voltage control over everything you see on the front panel here. So you have gate control over reverse and playback. You have CV control over the start and length. You have CV control over the sample, so you can pick which sample is playing via some voltage. And then you have volt per octave control over the pitch, which is kind of cool. And then finally, you have a gate output for, which is called end out. So whenever the sample finishes playing, it'll fire a gate. And finally, you have your audio output. So here you have your left out and here you have your right out. Everything you see here is exactly a mirror image of here, just for the right channel. In the middle here, you have this black er area here. This is for recording. So you have your record trigger button and you have a gate control for that as well. So you can trigger recording via some other gate signal. You have your left and right stereo inputs uh, for sampling. And then you have your bank and sample selection. So you pick which bank and which sample slot you want to record into. Moving up here, you have your micro SD card, as I mentioned before. And then you have this little gold plated button called edit sample. So this allows you to edit the samples themselves and perform other operations like saving and copying. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is just patch out my left output into my left input of my audio interface here. And I'm just gonna trigger a sample by hitting play. And as I say, you can pick different samples. And then I can change banks and then I have another set of 10 samples. And you can determine which bank you're in by the color of the, knob of the button here. So. As I change banks, you can see the colors change. Once you exhaust all the colors, then they start looping again, but they start blinking. So it blinks once and then it blinks twice. You can also go backwards with the banks by holding reverse and pushing bank. If you change the left sample knob while holding bank, it'll pick the color. And then if you change the right sample uh, knob, it'll change the blink rate. The other thing you can do is if you hold the play button, it turns blue and then it starts looping the sample. So that's gonna loop forever. And we can change the pitch control. Change the start position and the length. And the length can go all the way down. And as I said, you can reverse by hitting reverse here. One cool thing you can do with the end output gate here, which again fires when the sample ends, is you can patch that into the reverse jack. And then if you start looping the sample, Effectively, when it reaches the end, it'll reverse, and then when it reaches the end again, it'll re-reverse, so you can sort of ping-pong the sample that way. So I'm just going to demonstrate some very simple examples, and then we can maybe build up some more complicated patches uh, later on. But just to demonstrate the concept, for example, I can patch an LFO here from the peaks into any of these knob controls. So, for example, I can change the start position CV. So let me first set up something where the length is short so we can hear the effect. I start looping and if I patch this LFO into the start position or I can patch it into the volt per octave control so where it gets even more fun is if you start patching in something like a sequencer so I'm gonna quickly create a patch here I'm just gonna grab a clock source from the tempi here gonna grab one of the CV channels which is gonna be these four knobs in this case then I'm gonna patch the quantized voltage from here into my volt per octave control to control the pitch of the dog. Finally, I'm going to grab the output from the stackable here, which is the same gate that is triggering the sequencer. I'm going to use that to trigger the dog here. So let's put that in. All 
All right, that's kind of annoying, but you get the idea. And of course, we can use different uh, CV channels to control different things. So I have a second row of four knobs here, and I can patch that into the sample CV. So every time a trigger happens here, we're going to pick a different sample in whatever bank we're in right now. So all I'm doing here is I've set it to loop the sample and I'm lowered the length all the way down. And you get these kind of single cycle granular waveforms. And then you can manipulate the pitch and the start position. And I can revert it back real quick just by bringing this back up. If I patch my right output into the right output of my interface, you can see this coming out of the left and this coming out of the right. That's because right now I have it set to mono mode. So if you remember, you can toggle this module to either behave like two independent modules, or you can have the two stereo signals mixed together and output as a stereo signal from the left and right outputs. And the way you toggle that is by holding the two bank buttons here. So in stereo mode, you can hear that both sounds get output as a mix on both channels. If you switch the module to mono mode, you effectively have two independent samplers built into one module. What this allows you to do is you can run the audio from one through a different effects chain as the other. So for example, I've got this drum loop loaded onto my right channel, and I'm going to feed that through this 2040 uh, filter here. And I'm going to patch that into my little mixer here. So what we're going to hear now is if I trigger the left sample, it's, it goes through unaffected. If I trigger the right sample, which is this drum loop, I can run it through the filter here. And of course we can patch our the bird through another filter here or through let's say the fold processor just for fun. Another cool thing you can do is you can load up a bank with drum hits like I have here. And then you can use a sequencer to patch the sample CV here. So effectively at every step you can pick a different drum hit so you can get a very crude sort of drum machine going with one of the sample slots. And then if I patch the CV signal into the sample CV, it'll pick different slots in that bank. And we can do the same thing for the second channel here. So if I feed my second gate into the second channel of the sequencer here. So another cool thing we can do with the SDS is since it has volt per octave input, we can actually use a standard keyboard to play the samples. So in this case, I've got the Arteria key step because it has uh, CV and gate outputs directly at the back here which I've got patched to these two cables here. So if I just play my sample by hand, we've got this sort of bell sound. So now if I patch in the gate output from the keyboard into the play gate input here, I can trigger the sample. And then I can patch in my CV output, which basically maps to whatever keys are being played into the volt per octave input here. And then I can play melodic lines. Of course, I can change the length of the sample. And we can pick different samples as well, which aren't necessarily melodic. Two, 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 two. And of course, we can load uh, the second channel as well and mix two different sounds together. Two, 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 two
How would you like to go? How would you? How would you like to go? How would you like to go? Another thing we can do is treat this like an oscillator and run it through a basic subtractive patch. Uh, so run it through a filter and a VCA and then use an ADSR to control the VCA and the filter. So we've just got this kick drum running really fast. So now we can turn that into an oscillator, for example. You can ignore most of the modules here. I'm just going to use the filter here, the VCA here, and the ADSR here. All right, so first let's complete the audio signal pad. So I'm going to go straight from the audio of my sampler through the audio of the filter, through the VCA here. And then finally, I'm going to go outside of the VCA into my main audio output. And finally, we're just going to route the signal from the keyboard. So the gate from the keyboard will trigger the envelope here, the ADSR. And finally, the CV control of the keyboard, I'm going to use that to trigger the volt per octave input of the sampler. So now if I play a note, so now we've effectively turned our kick drum into a bass line or some kind of melody. So another thing we can do while we have this patch set up is we can see what a sequencer would sound like. So in this example, we're going to still use the STS as a oscillator. But instead of controlling the gate with the keyboard, I'm going to control the gate via this Tempe module here, which will be my clock source. And then we can use one of the CV channels running on the side here. Alright, I'm going to leave it there for now. This first video was mainly just to give you an intro of the module and some of the playback and CV functionality. Uh, stay tuned. In a future video, I'm going to be focusing more on sampling, recording, slicing, and manipulating the SD card. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and like this video if you like it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Samples, that's 10 banks of uh, 10 samples. Hey, guys. Hey, guys, welcome to another one. Hey, guys, welcome to Once Upon a Synth. You're right to tell your video. Hey, guys, welcome to another. So you can record two. <laughs> All right, so that was a good take, but I'm just going to do another one.